Arcovis was founded by Microsoft MVPs and were fast certified. Um, so we're also a part of the Microsoft VTSP program. Uh, we have Paul and also Natalia on our team who are part of that, that program. Um, what we do is we act as an extension to the Microsoft technical side because sometimes they don't always have the resources to to be at every client, so they bring us in for special special cases where we have special knowledge around an area. Uh, we frequently go to ADS sessions in the Microsoft Technical Center uh, where we work alongside Microsoft, and we also focus on an area we like to call operational intelligence. Um, now, what that is, it's search-driven applications and dashboards that give business users insight to information through search. So instead of a traditional BI solution, we use operational intelligence to expose data and search driving it from the back end. Um, we also, we're also subject matter experts. We have two authors on our team, uh, one for a SharePoint 2010 Enterprise Architects Guidebook, which I think we're probably giving out today, and also um, Natalia author, co-authored Microsoft Search, um, which focused on FAST and worked with some of the people on the product team. Um, we also, Paul spoke last month. He, he actually recently got announced as an MVP for SharePoint, so we're excited to have that. So that's a big deal for us. Uh, we're real happy that he, he got that award. Um, we also spoke at SPC last year. I'm not sure if we're speaking at this year's just yet, but we'll, we should find that out soon. Um, okay, so I want to talk to you about one of the offerings that we have right now. Um, usually the candidates for this fast help, fast search for SharePoint help check fall into two main categories. The first is people who are experiencing issues with fast and they're not sure how, how to resolve the issue or why it's happening. And the other group usually falls under people who have fast search. It's running fine, but they want to make sure they're optimizing it and it's at peak performance. So this is typically a three-day engagement. We'll review your search topology, your servers, your hardware, customizations, and any specific pain points that you point out to us. And we'll really do a deep dive. We'll research it. And uh, we'll find out what's going on in your, in your environment and then produce a prioritized list of recommendations for you. And then you can either take that and use us to fix it or fix it yourself. That's entirely up to you. But a lot of our big clients have found it very useful and it's pretty uh, low cost and high impact because you can good knowledge into what's going on. Um, also, we have Fast in a Box. Um, this is for organizations that are looking to build a solid enterprise search platform, people who are starting out. Um, it's more of a long-term strategy type of thing um, to get results that you're looking for out of FAST, and we'll guide you through the process of giving you industry-specific solutions, how to integrate your systems, how to expose the right data, and also we'll, we'll build on the operational intelligence that I spoke about earlier. Um, clients really benefit from this through our real-world experience, and our, our architects specifically, I think our biggest value is that we really focus on bringing IT and the business together, which I think is a gap that really is important to be filled in order for everyone to be aligned correctly in the organization. Um, so we also have some exciting news that I want to announce. We started recently developing on the Azure Prep platform. Uh, we have some search solutions on Azure that we're going to be announcing at the next user group, so I just want to throw this out as a teaser. And we'll also have a product offering coming out. And it's similar to Dropbox, but I can't really go into more than that at this point. And um, we're also excited to see Wave 15. We, also, we already have some access to search in Wave 15, but can't really disclose any of that right now um, until Microsoft decides we can. So we're looking forward to all that, and it's really an exciting year with Microsoft coming out with that new Azure platform, Wave 15. There's a lot of good things going on, and I'm glad we're a part of it. So I'm going to hand it over to Jeff in the meeting now. And, uh, that's it. Enjoy the food and wine. Hi, everyone. This is Namita Mehta, and I'm from uh, Merck. And uh, I'm here with Jeff Weiss, and we will be talking about enterprise search at Merck. So I don't know how many people know about Merck. Do you know Merck? What is Merck? Yeah. 
So we are one of the leading healthcare pharmaceutical companies. We have many drugs in different areas. We have uh, many vaccines. We have a lot of animal healthcare products. We have consumer healthcare products. We have uh, a lot of uh, other innovative medicines that we produce. And some of them, I'm sure you must have used one or the other products one day or the other. Copper tone is one of them, which everybody uses in July and August. Uh, Genuvia, Clarinex, Claritin are some of the other products that we have. So the agenda for today, yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, is it better? Okay, sorry about that. So today uh, the agenda is we will look at our search around a year back, how was it at Merck, and then we will look at the platform, the challenges that we had with our search last year, and what strategies did we put in place to make it better, what wins did we have, how did we make it better, and the next steps that we want to follow this year. So this is how our search was. People just didn't like the search, they couldn't find the content, the content was there, but they couldn't find what they were looking for. Uh, people would try once the search, they wouldn't find the information, they would never go back. They would rather dig in and not hold on. With that little orange button with the arrow? Yeah? Okay. Is that auto-fight right now? You're right looking. Okay, sorry. So um, people would try a search, they wouldn't find our content, they wouldn't find the content and they would never go back just because they didn't find it. They would rather spend 20 minutes looking for a file or a document um, through team sites than user search. Uh, these were some of the feedback that we used to receive. Um, I would like to read out the last one, which is very funny. One could hide an elephant in this website and it would be completely safe from detection. So really a lot of negative feedback and we knew the search doesn't work, but we really didn't have funds, we didn't have the strategy, we didn't know how to fix it. So there were a lot of things that we needed to go through to get it fixed. So this is uh, one of the wheels that you might have seen it earlier. We were in the red area. The cur uh, current state was the red. That I'm talking about the ear back, right? And we wanted to get into the green area. We wanted to be in a situation where people like our search. People would go back to the search. Because once the search was bad in our enterprise, it did re really didn't just mean bad search. It also meant bad enterprise portal. So it was a negative bad brand for us. So this is the platform that we have for enterprise search platform. It is um, using FS4SP. The platform hasn't changed over a year. Um, we still are searching all kinds of applications, intranet, internet, databases, documentum. We have uh, SharePoint, we have communities. Intra like we have the feed, stuff coming out from external sites. Um, nothing has changed on the technology point of view. So I want to just lay it out here that this presentation is not about technology. It's not about medical. It's about how we can improve search and it could be applied to any business area. So some of the challenges that we had in our search, of course, um, as days go by, we all have so much of content, right? It's, uh, I, if you think about it, you may have one terabyte of data within your personal desktop, your How's the, your iPads and your iPods and the movies that we download and the songs we download? It's like everybody has a, the storage is not a problem anymore these days. You can buy storage. So we have a lot of unstructured, structured data sources, of course, and same problem at Merck. The content is increasing by three-fold. Uh, we have a lot of in-house and federated content. We have outdated content. No one is going back and cleaning up. There's no retention policy. There's nothing. No, if there is, they're not following it. They're not removing it. We have a lot of duplicate content. We have uh, the size of the content, as we said, is increasing. Every year, we are adding terabytes of storage. And within a few months, we realize we may need to add more by the end of the year. So just the storage is going on. Uh, the security is another issue that we have seen. Um, you may teach and you may announce, you may educate people that please add the right security to your documents, to your team sites, to your team spaces, but it always gets missed. 
And once in a blue moon, you'll get a call in the middle of the night or on the weekend saying some of the data is exposed and it's showing up and it shouldn't be showing. It's, of course, search is a window to all that, right? But it's, search is not broken. But they, of course, think it's search that is broken. The problem is that security has not been handled correctly. And we've had this issue many times. Recently, we have added more uh, personalization search because we've added more security. So people, when they go and search for some things, they find all the information. You search for your name, you find all the information. It could be your uh, timesheets and all the personal information. They're like, oh, my, all my information is exposed to, to the world now. It's not. It's only you who can see it because the security is there. So we've had a lot of challenges, even after educating. Security is a big thing um, when it comes to search. User experience is another one. Everybody wants Google. You want to type. You want to get the information back. And that's it. You don't want anything more complicated. But yes. So it's using Active Directory security, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all about enterprise. I'm not talking on internet at all. And the user experience we were talking here about, again, you make it very simple. It may not work. You may not get the content that you're looking for because you have different repositories. You make it complicated. They may not click the right button. They may not choose the right repository. So again, the UI is very important. You don't want it too complicated. You don't want it too simple. It has to be the right mix. People have to see what they're looking for and be able to find it. Crawling. You put the file in. They want it to be available to search immediately. Why it's not available right away? I just added a file, and when I search for it, I don't get it. You don't get it because we have crawling times, and we don't want to crawl all the time. So there's this interval that we have. We do it every 12 hours. But again, it's some, another issue that we see. It would be nice to have one global dictionary where we could put all our uh, MERC terms and acronyms, everything, global, right? Every, we use uh, different terminology. It make it more like a MERC so that search could understand what people are talking. We would really like that. Uh, that's not there. That's another issue. Because in some countries, or even within the division, so we call it Merck Research Labs. Um, we call it the same thing as Merck Research Laboratory. And the acronym is MRL. So same thing could be said in different ways. Localization is another challenge. We are a global company. We want search to work for everyone, in our, wherever we support, wherever, our, wherever we have offices. Uh, again, the other piece that we also notice is that search is unique to application and processes, right? Uh, you cannot have the same result set or the same type for every division. Each person, each division will have, or each line of business applications will have their own requirements, and you cannot generalize them. So that's another challenge. How do we manage everybody's requirements? How to regain confidence? That is the biggest one. So we did improve search. But how do we get the customers back? How do we say, now it's improved, please go and try again? So these are some of the challenges we face. So this is, again, a screenshot of how our search looked last year. Um, you could see here that um, I start from the very top here. It says, I don't know this was a drop down. So this is nothing but scopes. We have the scopes there. It says, if you choose enterprise portal, you get this census. If you choose my this, you will search under that repository, let's say document it. So we had different scopes. People never saw that drop down. They just went and searched, and they would get all these links. And they're like, I can't find what I'm looking for. You didn't choose the right scope. That was the problem. Um, we had the suggested links. And sometimes in that suggested link, we actually gave the best, best information as well. But people didn't see that because it used to come every now and then because, again, it was a bad UI. Um, we had links to the webcast. So let's say here, I wasn't search for webcast. We had a link to the webcast. They don't want to go see the webcast. They want to go to the website where the webcast is. So how can I go to the website directly? So that was another issue. We did have um, the refiners are there. Again, people need to know what to click, right? It's not, never very easy what to choose, what to click, and where to go. Again, the UI needs to be right, and then it has to have the right information. So um, we started looking at all these issues. And last year, we worked with the management, and we agreed that we need to do something about search. So the first thing we started doing was started evaluating our search experience. We did a lot of surveys. We met with people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we looked at the feedback, the one which I showed you, some of the mail from the mailbox, 
So we used to get the feedback. We used to check, started checking that. Um, we started meeting people on our annual user conferences, asking them, what do you like about search? What do you don't like about search? People never said they like anything about search. They just gave us negative feedback. And that was fine because we wanted to improve. We wanted to hear the voice of the customer. So we looked at all that stuff. We looked at the analytics. We looked at the reports, which results are giving us, which terms are giving us zero results. Why is it not working? Though the content is there, why is it not working? What is the issue? So we started doing a deep dive on that. And then we started building a search strategy and a search center of excellence. And I'm going to give it over to Jeff, who's going to talk more about the search strategy. So uh, as Amina mentioned, we found we had all these issues, and we assembled a team uh, all with different uh, backgrounds. So we kind of spread out and make sure that it wasn't one that was uh, giving the improvements. Uh, there's five key areas that we look at. Uh, the first is features, and these are search capabilities that we decided to add or adjust or even remove. Um, there's the user experience, which is changing how the end user actually interacts with the, uh, the search results page themselves. Uh, the third is the metadata and governance strategy. We didn't really have a metadata strategy before. Um, every different content owner had a different source of metadata. We actually had four different uh, country lists with the United States represented four different ways. So um, we worked to align that and get that together where everybody could be pointing from the same source. Uh, search analytics, we've done a lot more to get a lot more analytics and to make sure that we review them a lot more readily. Uh, something that we, uh, we were capturing a lot in the past, but nobody was spending any time for reviewing them. So we had all this great data coming in, but it was just falling to the side. Uh, and all these were uh, tied around performance. The biggest thing we wanted to make sure is that any update or change that we made, it wouldn't impact the performance. Um, if there's poor performance in the system, no matter how good it is, people just aren't going to use it. So we made sure that was the number one priority for all the updates that we made. How big was your team, your search strategy team? Uh, we had primarily one UX person with a few people under him. There was uh, two search resources and uh, a, a team of two people who kind of was our, our connection to the content owners. So when we said there's a content gap, we had this team and they were able to reach out to the specific areas to improve. So it was relatively small, um, under six of us total. And you'll see some graphs at the end of how things have changed uh, after the work that we've done. Uh, so these are some of the, the features that we've either enabled, configured, or tuned based on the feedback that we're receiving. Uh, the big list, I actually have screenshots of a lot of them, so I'll go through them and uh, show some of the, the reasoning why. Uh, the first thing that we added, we called a domain finder. And uh, this is something that we received from feedback that uh, you need to mention that uh, people just wanted a website name. We index thousands and thousands of documents from a website. So when a user does a search, they get back all these documents, but they don't want that. They said, I just want to know the URL of a website. So this tool that we built, um, it's a, it actually lives in Keysight. It's just a list that we configure ourselves, a website name, a friendly teaser, friendly title, and a list of keywords that go with it. Uh, we found that a lot of the website owners didn't add any keywords. There was no SEO that was assigned to it. So this really brought the power back into our hands that we can reach out to owners and say, hey, we want to configure your site specifically for the domain finder and have that appear as the number one result. Um, you've actually seen this example uh, before the domain finder when somebody searched for a company store. Uh, the first two results would be a Dr. Scholl's news item and another one about Dr. Scholl's. So without the domain finder, you see the results are completely terrible. But by adding this in, we're able to guarantee that the user has uh, the best result and it's the number one result. Uh, the other main advantage to the domain finder is there's a lot of content that's in Merck that we just couldn't index. Uh, there's content that lived on the internet that we didn't want to crawl. There's content that was behind security, and there's applications which you just can't index at all. So by using the domain finder, we're able to bring all those to the user in the search results without actually having to crawl that content. Uh, the other thing that we've improved on is scopes. Uh, you saw in the last one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, custom document, we, uh, with FAST, we use custom document processing. So we took a team site list uh, through document processing, formatted it so it appeared in, in a nice friendly format like that. Uh, from, the, the, from the scopes you saw earlier, that a lot of confusion was there around this scope dropdown of all the different areas you can search. The biggest issue we had with that is the default one was searching the enterprise portal, but we have all this documented content, we have all this team site content, and we have all um, of the uh, other internal website content. 
Uh, and there's actually uh, people content as well, a piece of profile search. So users would, not knowing it's a drop-in, just do the search in the default box and say, I'm not finding what I'm looking for. Search is broken. You're not crawling my content. And almost every single time we found that if they just changed their drop-down to a different location, they were able to find exactly what they were looking for. And almost every time it was the number one result. <laughs> so the, the big improvement that we did is bring all the content together under one bucket and make that the default. So now any time a user does a search, it will automatically go across everything instead of just a specific area. But they still have the ability to target a specific content source if they know that's where their content lives. What was the default scope before you did that? It was uh, the enterprise portal. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, it was comprised of news, uh, support articles, things like that. Um, but it missed out a lot of other the other internal sites, our internet content, which is slowly being rolled into the portal, but there's uh, thousands of documents there which just aren't included. Uh, the next thing we worked on is the dynamic filtering and refiners. There's primarily three ways we generate refiners for our site, and they're different uh, for the different content sources. Uh, we do some auto-tagging through our document processing that, based on the content that we're crawling, we automatically inject some tags there, and that helps the user identify um, what area their content's from. Uh, there's a lot of manual tagging, which was done, where a user would just, there'd be a list that exists somewhere, they would go in and manually tag all their content. Uh, we're moving to the EMM Enterprise Managed Metadata approach, where we have a centralized list where we have an enterprise set of taxonomy, and that would be applied at a document level, but we're also forcing it. What did you use for auto-tagging? Uh, just the document processing pipeline. Uh, custom stages. So we would, yeah, we would do either based on URL, uh, a check in the stage, if the URL equals this, inject this tag, if it equals that, inject this tag. You didn't use any third party? No, no, no third party. Um, but I guess that's a good point. With EMM, uh, we're having it uh, mandatory in all the places now, so when somebody uploads a document, they have to fill out uh, these specific metadata before they can click OK and actually have the document added. And with that, we're also looking at third-party tools to go in and tag all the content that already exists. Um, most of the tagging in the past, because it was manual, people chose just not to do it because it was one extra step. So by putting automation in process, making things mandatory, kind of building some governance around that, we've been finding that the tags are a lot better and the content that comes back is a lot better as well. Yeah, we have a group, um, Information Architecture, who uh, their responsibility is to go across the organization and find out the terms which are common across the board and, and kind of build buckets for each of the organizations. Uh, the goal is to have a high level that can be applied to everyone. That uh, So regardless of what group you're in, you have some relevant content. But uh, then there's also individual ones that you can drill down once you have a specific group. Uh, the next thing that we did a lot of tuning on is around spell check. Uh, originally, we just were using the out-of-the-box spell check dictionary. Uh, this is actually an ESP result uh, shot. But we're using the out-of-the-box spell check dictionary, so when a user would search for Merck names or Merck terms, the system would come back and actually, most of the time, give them an incorrect result. So when somebody searched for Rahway, which is a Merck site, it would say, did you mean Ra space way? And when a user clicks that, they immediately get zero results. So what we ended up doing is going through the documents, going through the search uh, feedback, those query logs, and finding the terms and things that people were looking for, and kind of taught the system to speak Merck. Uh, and that ended up giving us something like you see here, where the user could type in raw and incorrectly, and they would get a good, uh, good spelling correction for the, the Merck terms. We've added uh, site names, divisions, product names, um, everything in the past that when a user, they would either get no spelling correction or an incorrect spelling correction. So now it's much more uh, aware of what the user is actually searching for and that the fact that they're actually at Merck. Uh, this is not custom development, it was tuning the spell check dictionary, so adding additional terms in there. Uh, best bets was another area that uh, we found we had some challenges. Uh, as Nimia mentioned, we had a search, sync search tips. So a search tips of how to improve search that uh, once we migrated to fast, it always appeared. Every time a user did a search, they would always get this tips uh, best bet that would appear. Uh, if they had a keyword that matched another best bet, it would appear directly underneath it. Uh, what we found is that because that appeared every time, users were just treating it as white noise. They would see the best bet appear, they would just scroll right down to the results and uh, completely ignore it. 
we received a lot of feedback that users would, come, uh, would say that I, I didn't find the document I was looking for. We would retry their search, and it would be in this best bet. But because it was always there, they would just not see it. Uh, so what we ended up doing is stripping out this one that appeared all the time and really tune back the number of keywords that all the best bets appear. So it really only appears when it's a truly a best bet instead of just we think it's good. Um, that really allowed a user to, when it appears, they know this is probably what I want and they focus on that instead of skipping right past it. Uh, synonyms and acronyms, uh, kind of similar to spell check. These, uh, we didn't have any of these configured in the beginning. We didn't push uh, much effort thinking that they really matter. But what we found is there's no governance around any of the content. Uh, using the Merck Research Labs example, we have people tag the content as Merck Research Labs. We have others tag it as MRL. And we have uh, other people tagging it as Merck Research Laboratories. So to find a document, a user actually had to do three separate searches just to guarantee that it would come back in the results. So we've been going through and um, adding a lot of synonyms, acronyms into the system. So uh, kind of taking the responsibility away from the searcher to, to know what, uh, which way to search and from the content owner to know which way to tag. Uh, by doing acronyms, it allowed the, the user just to enter one of the variations and bring back all the results. Um, prior to any of these, uh, adding to any of the acronyms, uh, there was a, a very, very low chance that what they found was coming back. Um, and adding, uh, we, we have a, an acronym dictionary within Merck. Uh, that's what we actually use to base our uh, library on it. We took that extract and imported it into the system and constantly monitor the feedback that we're receiving and the queries that go through and add additional acronyms as they're needed. Uh, these are some of the other features that uh, kind of we, we use. Most of these are out of the box. Uh, from a sorting standpoint, we only offer sorting on relevance, state, and size. Uh, we looked into adding some other possibilities, but uh, we found that basically nobody uses this, so we ended up limiting uh, the ones that are there. Uh, from a relevancy model standpoint, uh, we're using out of the box for the enterprise portal. The custom line of business applications, they have a custom relevancy model uh, that's tuned very specific to their needs. But we found with all the different ways uh, the different organizations interacted with the enterprise uh, search solution, uh, the out of the box is the best way. But we're uh, always monitoring that. Uh, to see if it needs to be tuned. We do do a lot of uh, boosting. Uh, we do some dynamic boosting, and we do uh, we add some boost to the relevancy score of certain articles that we know should appear on top. But from a, a core relevancy model, it's just that out of the box. Uh, from a duplicate standpoint, we decided to leave duplicates in, but collapse them. So a user will do a search. Uh, they'll receive the single result in there and have the, uh, the notification that there is a duplicate. Uh, this is primarily just to show uh, us where the duplicate content exists, and then we can go to the end user and have them clean it up. So uh, we can reduce the, the content at the source level instead of uh, having everything live in the index. Uh, from a, a matching standpoint, uh, we're using the all terms or simple all or the, the and. Uh, basically, that just means that when you do a search, every single term you're searching for must be included in the search results, not counting the noise words. Uh, we did some analysis looking into the uh, using an any or an or, but we found that that really impacted uh, some of the, the user's queries. There was a lot of cases where it would, uh, we found that a user would be one keyword off from the document appearing. They would uh, have the, the one additional term would cause the document that they're looking for not to appear in the results. And seeing that, we that's when we started doing evaluation of, of any. But what we found is because there's so much common content, there's a lot of Outlook, things like that, a lot of Microsoft words in the document. Um, the document that just had so many of those words always appear on top and not the, the article they were looking for. So we ended up sticking with the, the all terms instead of the any. Um, the last thing is uh, security trimming. We, we do security trimming for all of our team site content and SharePoint content. Uh, it is all out of the box, but as Amina mentioned, uh, there's a lot of training issues that we've been dealing with. Uh, users uh, incorrectly set the permissions and it actually is available to everybody in the company and it immediately comes back that search is broken because we're not respecting security. So it's as quick as we can having that cleaned up and doing a recrawl and then training them that they need to set this correctly. And the other thing is uh, a lot of people don't understand that the results are personalized based on who they are. So they'll do a search, see their results come back and think, well, if I'm seeing this, everybody else in the company, and that gets raised up as a red flag. So it, it's not a technology issue with security trimming, it's a training. And it's 
finding ways to educate the users that the behavior and the, the impact if they do things incorrectly. Uh, we have a search community where we've been adding a lot of this data to uh, communicate that out. We have a lot of screenshots. We uh, have news announcements that we're constantly sending out. Uh, there's a lot of information that users don't have that, uh, that by publishing out there, they'll improve the way they interact with search um, and uh, regain a lot of the confidence that they're missing. Uh, from a user experience perspective, this is a pretty standard SharePoint 2010 out-of-the-box page. Uh, you see we have the document thumbnails enabled. We have the suggested links and the integrated people search. Uh, one of the things that we enabled, which isn't there out of the box, is the actionable search links. And these are also based on the user feedback. Uh, we had a lot of times where a user, they just want to know the properties of the document. They want to know where it is. And in the past, you have to copy the URL, paste it into a new browser window, strip off the document, go there, and then right click on the document and a few properties. Uh, through this one link directly in the search results, they can click that button and they're taken immediately to the document properties. Uh, same thing for the view and location. They click that one link, they're immediately taken to the document library where the item lives. Uh, it's a big time saver from an end user standpoint, and it allows them to uh, go directly from the search result page into their documents without all the additional steps. Especially if it's not the document that they're looking for, it saves a lot of time from going back. Uh, the other uh, I would say the most important thing that we've added to our search results page is the feedback button. Uh, this is something that when it was added, I had a lot of doubts myself. I thought we would only get negative feedback, like search sucks, fix it. But we received a lot of really helpful information that uh, led to almost all the improvements that we've made. Uh, we received, I tried searching this way. I couldn't find this specific document. I want to know what this website is. I want to uh, find this information. Um, all of this is captured through feedback. We capture the user doing the search. We capture the search that they did, the actual URL that they were using. And uh, from there, as we receive the feedback, we monitor it every day. We contact the users, uh, and they get the adjustment that's necessary. And it, it's, that's, I think, been the, the key piece to all the improvements that we've made. So uh, on all your enterprise search pages, I highly recommend a feedback button. Uh, it will be absolutely valuable, and it will help you improve. What mechanism are you using? Are you capturing it in a list or is it firing off an email to somebody? It's, it's capturing a list. We have a, um, an info platform that pops open a window which automatically pulls the user's name and the URL that they did the search on. And there's a little box for comments as well as a rating scale. We use that to kind of gauge um, how good we're doing. Uh, originally, it was a lot of ones and uh, negative, but we've actually been seeing some fives come back, which is uh, really surprising because typically when you have any feedback, nobody's going to submit anything other than negative, just because nobody wants to submit positive feedback saying the system does what it's supposed to do. Good job. Um, so the other thing that we're uh, looking into a lot now, and uh, we've made some great strides in, is uh, metadata and governance. Uh, as I mentioned, we're using uh, enterprise managed metadata. We have a, a very high level set now, but we're working on improving that and uh, getting a lot more detail there. Uh, we're also extracting a lot of metadata from documents as well. Uh, we have some energy extractors in the document processing pipeline where we extract uh, specific information. Uh, typically, uh, regular expressions is what we use, so uh, Merck product names, uh, Merck internal product numbers, and we use that for uh, that in certain, certain areas as well. Uh, from a navigation standpoint, we, we're using the enterprise management data navigators by making sure that the content is tagged with those, we can make sure that uh, the set of refiners that we have is much more compact. There's not a million choices. There's only a very small number. So it really allows the user to refine better and interact with the, the navigators better. Uh, we've also added more navigators to the page based on the enterprise uh, managed metadata, but set, set, set certain uh, thresholds. So if there's a very, very small number that comes back, it's not going to appear. But uh, as the user refines down and more uh, specific ones are there, it'll, it'll appear. Um, and, that, and that just allows them to kind of uh, make sure that they don't see uh, too much on the page at one time. We wanted to make sure that from a UX standpoint, uh, they weren't overwhelmed by the, the sheer number of navigators that appear. Uh, and just with uh, the metadata, we uh, tie these into the synonyms and best bets. We want to make sure that uh, the best bets and the synonyms that are configured are also based on the, met, uh, the managed metadata. So you don't want a user to have to see something when they type a synonym a certain way, a uh, uh, best bet when they type a synonym a certain way, but not the other way. We want to make sure that they appear all the time together. Uh, the other big piece, which was uh, custom developed internally, is a concept called macro tagging. Uh, typically, 
when a user tags their content, they would upload a document, fill out the appropriate metadata for that, and it would be uh, crawled and uh, appear uh, as part of the index. Uh, what we found is users who have several thousand documents in their team site, there's no way they can go in there manually and add all those tags. Uh, there's third-party third solutions that go in and add all the tags to the content themselves, but uh, that requires, if they want to change those tags, that requires retagging all these documents. And a single site could have 100,000 documents, which is a lot of tags, a lot of updates that would need to be pulled back in the incremental crawl. Um, so macro tagging, the tool that we built, is uh, kind of brings that level, uh, brings all the tagging one level up. What it does is a user can fill out a form at a separate location. They put in their site name, and they choose their uh, tags from a drop-down uh, for various very different categories. They can add keywords. And we have a script that runs that downloads this list and goes against the search index, grabs the every uh, document that has that site name. So 100,000 documents, it will do a query for all those 100,000. And then directly in the search index, we'll inject all those tags in there. So at the end of the day, we have uh, the index fully populated with all these meta tags, and it's not the content. So when a user does a search, it's as if a user tagged all 100,000 documents in their search index with these specific tags, but it's all just located in this one list. So if they need to go in there and update their tags, all they need to do is go in the list, change a few values, and uh, the next time that script runs, they'll immediately update the content in their index. Uh, so in, they update this list, it gets written to the index, and then you do a crawl again. No. Uh, so no crawling is actually next, uh, needed. Uh, they update the content in this list. Uh, we download the list, uh, and through a, the content API, that. Uh, a connection into the fast index. We actually extract the document, do a partial update, and put the content back in the index without actually recrawling at all. But then but eventually you're going to recrawl. Yeah, so if a user were to go in and make updates to the content, we would do a recrawl and then have to run the script again and update it within the index. But every time you did a full crawl, you need to run the Right, right. Yeah, 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 it's on a schedule runs uh, on a nightly basis. Uh, so it, the big advantage is if a uh, user doesn't update, the user doesn't need to update every single one of their documents. They get, if they update one, all those other ones don't uh, actually need to be recrawled. The script will already have that taken care of. Uh, we saw a little bit of uh, the indexing times were very, very long in the beginning. But because the majority of the sites don't update the mass number of documents, after that first one ran, it was a very, very small number. So we, uh, because we can start and stop the script, the first time we ran it, we would just run it on the weekend, update as much as we could, and stop it in the next week and run the rest until that initial sale was fully populated. And then after that, we would go in and uh, just let the, uh, like as the updates go through. Analytics reports. 
uh, where we can see where users are actually interacting with the search results pages. We have the search logs, and uh, through that, using uh, reporting tools, we have popular queries, queries that gave no results, and uh, user feedback, uh, that little button that we have on the search results page. And then, based on the feedback that we receive, there's a few different approaches that we take. Uh, we see that there's a uh, content gap, so the content's just not there. We work with the content owner and uh, have them add the content in that specific area, or we uh, use a domain finder and uh, create a URL for that missing content. Um, we've also found that there's a lot of cases where there's, no, there's not sufficient keywords, there's not good HTML, the titles are missing from pages, and uh, if we find that the content does exist somewhere in the index, we reach out to the owners and have them uh, improve their content, and the next time we do the incremental crawl, uh, it appears a lot better in the search results. Uh, the other thing that we started enforcing is uh, cleaning up uh, content that has a timestamp. So things like other information, site closings, uh, we had those uh, in the in the index, and they've always been there. Uh, still today, if you search for blood drive, I think the number one result is a blood drive from May 2010. So trying to get the content owners to actually clean up their content and putting start dates and end dates on the content to make sure that it's there, it's number one, uh, for that period, but as soon as that time period passes, uh, it's it's gone, and you just won't see that anymore. Uh, this is a continuous, ongoing effort. Uh, originally, it was something that we just kind of ignored, but now we uh, look at it every day and uh, try and reduce the amount of time between the time a user submits feedback and the time that their email and it's actually addressed. Good question. Nope. Uh, and lastly, as I mentioned, performance is key. Uh, the query response time is something that we always want to make sure is very, very fast. Um, we found that uh, sometimes if there's a problem with the indexing and the queries take too long, uh, users execute the search and it would take too long and they would just leave. They wouldn't even bother coming back again. So we, we make sure that everything we're doing, uh, any new capabilities we're adding, any tuning, uh, we test it out in the development environment to make sure that it doesn't impact performance negatively and then move it into uh, our production environment. Uh, the other thing is uh, we want to make sure that we always have 100% uptime. We have a redundant environment, so uh, anytime we need to do maintenance, anytime any server crashes, we can guarantee that users can still actually get the search. And uh, the last piece around performance is uh, just the, the sizing. Uh, it's, it's tough to know how much content is coming in, just the, the rate of which is growing, so we're always uh, making sure that from a disk space standpoint and from a resourcing standpoint, that the servers are not overutilized, that there's uh, capacity to grow, uh, because tomorrow we could have a massive upload of documents, and we want to make sure that that doesn't lock up the system or cause users not to uh, be able to see the results. Uh, and lastly, just from an indexing standpoint, if we do a uh, uh, full text index of all the documents, uh, we do have a lot of cases where the, the actual metadata is searched as well. There's some cases where we don't want to have that search just because it's, it's good for refiners, but it's not great from an inquiry standpoint. Uh, we have an incremental indexing schedule. It is dependent on the content source, so things like uh, service articles, they'll only get crawled once a day. Information about the company will get crawled, say, once a week. And news articles, we crawl every hour because that's uh, information that we want to keep up to date. And uh, we're trying to automate as much as possible for everything. So anytime a new site's added, it automatically make it surface. Um, incremental crawls are always going, and anytime. Uh, like things like macro tagging, we, we automated that so it's uh, scheduled tasks always run and always make sure the content is updated. Yeah, you can you can configure different schedules based on uh, based on a lot of different things. Talk a little bit about your uh, your backup farm. Or, like, what, what was your strategy there? Are you indexing at the same rate that you are in your production farm? The whole identical farm, like in a different uh, location. I don't know how much we're allowed to say. Yeah, I guess I can say. So, um, in the, the older environment, we actually had a mirrored environment. So we would index twice, essentially, and uh, if one entire farm, and then we'd have another farm standing up. Uh, the new one, we have uh, the duplicate rows. Uh, so if one row goes down or one member of the row goes down, we'll immediately fill over to the second one and have that available. So it's not like you have a completely replicated farm? Not in the, in the new environment, no. In the, in the 
the previous environment we had that. We're into a lot of issues there uh, where I don't know if it's if it's a search thing or just uh, the way we are crawling, but we found almost every single collection or index on each of the farms was out of sync. One document, two documents, they were never completely in sync. So by moving to the one farm, uh, that, that's been a lot more helpful because the user would do a search, they can actually do the same search twice and get two different sets of results back. So by moving to the one farm, whether the document's there or not there, they at least have consistent behavior. So that was one of the, the big drivers for reducing it down to the one environment. Are you only crawling SharePoint content? Do you have other stuff too? No, no, we're crawling. Uh, SharePoint is the majority. That's ninety something percent of the content. But we crawl uh, Documentum. We crawl XML files. We crawl databases. We crawl uh, internal uh, Apache HTML websites. And uh, yeah, yeah so some themes as well. So when you were talking about uh, that. There was a lot of issues with um, security. Was that mostly SharePoint, or was that across the board? No, yeah, mostly SharePoint. Um, basically, all the other content, other than Midas, so SharePoint and Midas, uh, all Midas those are. Documented. Oops, sorry, documented. Mark term. Uh, yeah, everything else is uh, basically public content, so that's things that anybody in the company can see. And there's no extra trimming on that. No, we did not use the Microsoft Connector. Uh, we. Sorry, Carlos. We tried and tried and tried, <laughs> <laughs> and then threw the towel. We used. Uh, we're working with VA Insights. We're using their document connector, and yep, I can tell you, uh, we've had fantastic results with it. It worked right from the start. Our performance has been great, and uh, it's been uh, very easy to interact with. So, are you doing other stuff with the connector framework uh, other than uh, and and to drive the document connector? No, at this time, now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just going to wrap up quickly here now. So just wanted to go back and see the wins that we had, right? So as I said, we relied heavily on the voice of the customer. We listened to them. They gave us feedback. We went back to them. We said, okay, we fixed your thing. Can you try again? They liked it, and that was one of the ways we were able to get back their trust. So definitely listen to the customer, ask them questions. They never hesitate to tell you what doesn't work. So that's good. Um, we also, as I said, developed a community. Um, Jeff pointed that out. So we created a search community. We post a lot of articles, which helps people to understand what we are doing, what is coming, and to educate them regarding security, regarding how to use different features, how to use scopes, how to narrow down their search. So we use, and then if they want to add another domain, they can come back to us and say, add another domain. So it's a very um, busy community. We add a lot of content. They ask a lot of questions. So it's, it's really great that way. So we do send out a lot of news. We also, as I said, send out a lot of newsletters. We send out emails. So it helps to educate people the way you could. We also built a search strategy. That was one of the main reasons how we were able to overcome all those issues. Because we built a search strategy. Um, the whole team, we both built a search team. right? And with that team, what we did was there were full-time people working on it and looking at it to how to improve the search and uh, what we can do within our budget, within our time frame, what should we do, and how should we do it. We also, um, so as I said, about the, from the feedback, so we saw these feedback, and then we said, OK, how could we implement some of these things quickly? How could we build them? Or maybe there are some things that we need to build it later, maybe over time. So we created a project plan, shared it with the users, told them what we are doing, how we will improve the search, what things we can add quickly, like Domain Finder, uh, some of the spell checks. Again, we created these dictionaries and, and these lists, and that really helped. People came back to us. We added that information quickly. They were happy. We were happy. Things were working. Quick wins. Um, we also enhanced the search experience, as you saw. That was nice. Uh, people are happy. They are able to find the content. We, uh, cre as I said, we established and communicated a vision. Ensured executive awareness, education, and buy-in. That is very important. Not everybody has funds for search. Search is something which uh, people want to use. They want to get the results, but they may not have funds. To educate them, to make them aware where the issues are, and to get those funds was very critical. And then we created a uh, monthly dashboard report. So I'm going to show you one of the screenshots. So we created these dashboards. We sent it out to them, said, look how we have improved over time, and what is happening, what next are we going to do, what we have implemented already. So it helps people. It was one slider, one slide. And then people would see it, and they'll say, OK, this is, what, this is good. 
you're getting good feedback. So this is one of the graphs that we used to show how uh, we are doing with search. So as you can see, in October and November, our search really wasn't working. We had a lot of negative feedback. And uh, if you look at the numbers, we used to get close to, like, what? 8,000 searches per day, we were getting close to 10 negative feedbacks a day. So that was like really bad search at that time. And then over the period, because we started improving from November onwards, the negative feedback has gone down considerably. And we have actually started getting positive feedback. So now we say, oh, this was great. I found what I exactly what I was looking for. And so it's like, I think it's mainly because they were surprised to get things. So started getting positive feedback. Generally, people don't type in positive feedback, but for us, People were shocked to get stuff. <laughs> the next step, what we want to look at is um, how can we optimize and standardize our enterprise search tools and um, applications for various line of business applications and divisions, right? What can we do? How can we integrate the two? How can we make sure that uh, our enterprise vision is clear and we are still getting what they need for the divisions? Um, we also are planning to implement advanced search. Query completion is something which is not available today. That's something which we want to add soon. Personalization. Uh, there is some personalization available today, but we want to see how we can make it better in the sense when you search for your, when you search, it will look at your user ID and give you the results only for you. But we want to see how we can improve it with the geolocation, make sure they get the results in their language, in the preferred language, and stuff like that. So we want to add more there. Uh, mobility is another one. Everybody wants everything in iPads and uh, everything in iPhones and Android. So yes, we're looking in mobility, what we can do for enterprise level. Uh, the desktop search, we implemented that. Um, for a small group, we want to see how it is, if people are going to use it or not. We haven't heard negative or positive, so we don't know whether we're going to roll it out or not. But again, we are looking into that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you elaborate on the desktop search? It is. Uh, Jeff could give you more information, but what it is, it's uh, through your, on your desktop, you can search your file system, you can search team sites, you can search uh, uh, the share, the people you, expert users, and then one more thing, right? Uh, no, okay. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, yeah. Bring the team site search and people search to the desktop. Are you using yeah. apps in your desktop, or are you using some type of free device? Yeah. We're, yeah, we're not, we're not indexing a desktop and presenting out on a SharePoint site. Right? It's the other way. From your desktop, you can search the back index. Right, but I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're using for. What type of search functionality do you use uh, to index the actual desktop items, the actual... Uh, right, 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 we're not actually indexing the desktop items. Those are, those are just the standard oh, Windows steps. Windows search, search. It's yeah. the, uh, uh, the old OS DX search category. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like giving one place to search everything, mm -hmm. but again, I don't know if people are really using it as much, if it's ad adding a lot of value or not. Not yet. We don't know the path forward for that yet. Uh, as uh, Jeff pointed out, we're also looking into building a enterprise taxonomy that is done through our information architecture group. They're working on that. Uh, cloud search is another one. We have few projects which are which we are going to implement. And the SharePoint uh, stuff is going to be implemented on cloud, so we want to see how we can integrate search over there, what we need to do there. So again, we're looking into that. Are you looking into Yes. Yes and no. Yeah, so we can't disclose too much yet, but yes. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, if you want to continue and improve, as I said, continue to look into the feedback, continue to see what people are saying, improve, send them the information back, reply back to their emails, and let them know things are working. They would test and let you know. So I think um, that would help to improve search. So that's it from my end, I guess. Is there any because that's already done. We did the UI already, um, as he showed the screen. So that's not one of, but again, we want to ensure. You know, it's a good point I should add, because we want to continue monitoring the UI. One yeah. of the, the other things we're looking at now is uh, the refiners, or just the out of the box, single click um, display. We're looking to uh, using different refiner displays, so multi-select, uh, things like that, or different representations of the, the actual refiners. Yeah, but again, there are some requirements which are for enterprise level. Some of them are only for line of business divisional applications. So it's not something which we're going to adapt immediately over in our enterprise, but maybe slowly. Again, we are looking at other stuff. Definitely, UI is a piece. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's always important. One question and answer. And can you ask a little bit about the document management team? Can I do a Dockway web service? Uh, we we work very closely with the document management team. They're actually part of our organization. So uh, back in Fast ESP, we used the ESP document connector. So we had a lot of we had that good relationship, the, the credentials, things like that. So once we got the PA instance one, it was very easy to uh, get that hooked up and indexing right away. I often use the same search team shrunk at all. I'm sorry. Uh, had, you said you had like, like kind of a team of six now that you've gotten to this implemented, has it, has it shrunk or is it the same portion? Almost the same. Again, people are doing other stuff. Right now we are building stuff, so I would say from the UX point of view, we, wouldn't, we won't have as many resources. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. the same team, but the allocations, like before we were almost 100% for a period of time, uh, that's significantly been reduced. Now it's just kind of making things that are still running as well, so it's a lot lower percentage for all the resources. But we still do have uh, bi-weekly meetings to uh, monitor, review, uh, make sure we're all on the same page together and keep everyone updated that we're, we're not, we don't want to just drop it, we want to continue to go through, but it requires a lot less than it did uh, in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, in terms of rollout, they, they, they say it's not zero, it's by now, so you put it in rough terms, the system really stops. Do where you are today, how long did that take? That roughly, did you roll this out incrementally to pilot users, so they did the rule that you know, today you don't have it, tomorrow now you see how you do it. So we started looking in November um, and started coming up with a plan on how to roll it out. For some quick wins we did, we started doing it, rolling it out in December during the holiday break uh, that we have. And uh, so by April, I would say by March or April, we had already done most of the stuff because the quick one wins. And then we started migrating from ESP over to FastSearch for SharePoint. So that's another piece that happened uh, over from April to now. But uh, most of the improvements that you saw were done in um, from the November over till March, I would say. Right? Yeah, it was a relatively short time frame, but yeah, we we ended up uh, kind of prioritizing all the items together, and we didn't want to roll everything out at the same time yeah. because if something didn't go right, we wouldn't know what to actually tie to. So we'd roll out a feature, give it a few weeks to see how users would interact with it, then roll out the next feature, and then through those time periods, we can measure to see if it was good or bad and make any adjustments. Did you find that the user community uh, was uh, rapidly building up? So Definitely, because all these uh, ideas, some of the features that he saw were um, domain finders, uh, synonyms, spell checks. We, these were more like lists. Once we created the list, to add to that was very easy. So again, yes, we did uh, see a lot of quick wins. We saw once we built it, it was easy to get more and more added to that list and uh, keep improving. One of the nicest things was as we added some of these capabilities, we could go to teams and say, hey, we made this little change, look at the impact. And we very quickly got a lot of teams on board that they were saying, hey, can you add these as domain fires? Hey, what can we do to improve our content? So kind of right. uh, by showing these little ones, we got everyone engaged and they really wanted to help instead of us kind of saying, please help us. Right. It was, and yeah, I think that the first time we received a five for the feedback, we were jumping for joy. <laughs> And I think also what we did was we communicated a lot. We did go to a lot of divisional meetings. We went to a lot of managers, a lot of uh, directors, informed them. So they knew what's happening, and they helped us by giving their list so we could add into this. So. Any other questions? Thank you, everyone. <laughs>